Hey! This is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm reviewing the obvious choice. The Swede uh, from Hagstrom. Uh, or as it's called in Swedish, Hagström. Useless knowledge. Um, okay. Hagstrom used uh, to be a company f actually from Sweden. They aren't nowadays. And uh, they started out making accordions. And then turned to electric guitars in the late 50s, early 60s. And their first uh, models were actually they shared style with the accordions actually they had like pearloid all over the necks and fretboards and everything and the body and looked really shiny and they are actually collectibles today and but I don't think they were that easy to sell. So they turned to more regular models and this was one of them. The Swede. And uh, originally, originally it was actually called the uh, Hagstrom LP. Since, yeah, it's a Les Paul. Anyone can tell. Uh, but they changed the name since, you know, Gibson doesn't like when other people copy their stuff. So, yeah. And especially when they're doing it better than they are. So, yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about the guitar. At the top. This is a reissue classic thing. They're trying to make it close to the original, but they, it has brand new, proper, good working tuners to start off with like it a lot they have this big uh, hackstrom head and uh, usually when there are there's a binding around when it looks like this there's a binding around the headstock that's not the case here uh, they have a piece of pearloid that they stuck on top of the headstock and then painted the black parts on so everything like the name and everything just shines through uh, Beautiful, in beautiful pearloid style. So if you see this, you can tell what the original guitars actually look like, because this was covering the entire thing. Uh, yeah. And then we go to the neck, and that's a special thing. And uh, uh, an original design, actually. This is not a new thing. This is from the original. Uh, it's very thin, and it's extremely thin for a Les Paul style guitar and and it all comes down to something they call the H expander truss rod uh, and basically the truss rod is uh, a H beam like something you find on a railroad track or something uh, in that shape and uh, so it's a lot bigger than the regular truss rods you find in an electric guitar neck. And um, yeah, that has many good thing, uh, side effects with it or effects with it. Uh, it has, it makes the neck a lot more stable. And uh, well, to be honest, metal resonates and sustains the tones better than wood. So it's good in many ways. And according to the homepage, uh, the truss, uh, the H expander, goes all the way down to where the neck, uh, where the neck ends. Usually, a truss rod ends here, where the neck meets the body. And yeah, that adds stability as well, and probably sustain, and a lot of nice things. We have a three ply binding around the neck, and we have. Something they call another proprietary thing for Hagstrom, a resonator wood fingerboard. Apparently it's not wood at all, it's some kind of composite. And uh, well, you don't know what it's made of. I don't know, black magic maybe. Uh, it looks like, uh, they made it look like, I suppose, uh, 
uh, it looks like a brownish ebony and it's very hard and uh, yeah it's made to uh, mimic ebony i think but since it's it's not wood then the, the idea is that you won't have the <laughs> the bad parts about having wood that you have like dead spots can appear uh, along the neck where the notes don't ring out uh, and wood is uneven I mean, you can't find a piece this long that has the similar uh, characteristics down here and there and there. So, yeah, even here they were uh, ahead of their time. Now it's more and more companies are starting to use uh, new and different materials for next guitars and uh, guitar bodies. They were way up ahead of them. Uh, I forgot to mention the nut. That's actually a special uh, graphic nut for this model. Uh, so it's real good stuff. Graphites from Graphtech, the best ones. Uh, yeah, the body is mahogany. Apparently, it's a mahogany body with a mahogany top. Very strange, but yeah, that's what the homepage says. They have a belly cut, nice. You don't find that on a regular Les Paul. Makes it a lot more comfortable. And yeah, two custom 58 pickups, Hagstrom's own, and yeah. And two switches. I'll get back to them when we go to the electronics part. A beefy, solid, uh, tunematic style bridge and what you can't see underneath here is uh, the strings anchor in one anchor each below this one. I'll post pictures of this on my Facebook page. Check down below here. So you can see what it's like. And uh, yeah, that's a cool design, I think. Uh, Yamaha is doing something similar uh, on some of their models. I have one of them. And uh, I actually think it affects sustain and the entire tone of the guitar. So if you ask me, I think it's a good design. Two tones, uh, tones to volumes in the regular Les Paul style. Well, yeah, that's it. Materials and hardware, uh, eight. Um... Yeah, this is, uh, as I said, usually they were made in Sweden. Production ended in the 80s and uh, in later years it's back again. Uh, I think the owners are in the US and they are made in China. And uh, China is... Quality-wise, China can be really good and it can be not so good and this is I don't know somewhere in between because some parts of it are actually really good and like the entire neck the the body um, yeah it's well done there are stuff like the paint job isn't perfect you can tell on the edges uh, the fret ends I think the guitar shop that I got this from has done some filing because if you go further up you can tell it's not that good and other uh, suites I've tried have had rather poor fretwork um, yeah but other than that I think it's very solid they are known to be durable actually and this is recreating the original design uh, one thing uh, I won't talk about them electronically but the feel of them they have the, the tone and volume knobs and yeah they look really nice vintage uh, but they move really slow and um, there is really nothing to you know no nothing to grip onto and if you have if you've been playing and you're sweaty your hands are wet then 
I'm not sure you can even move this. Uh, so... Yeah, I suppose it's like the original, but... I'm quite sure that the original pots were moving easily. This is, a, I don't know, bad, good, good or bad thing. Um, since it, if they work too loosely, if they move too light, if it's too easy to move them, then that feels cheap as well. So, or I'm not really sure what I think about that. Um, yeah. Otherwise. Build quality durability, it gets an 8. Feels very solid. A strange thing about it is it's actually body heavy. I've never experienced that ever. Uh, sitting down. It's, <laughs> it's like too heavy, so it's falling over the knee. Uh, and uh, I don't have a regular Les Paul to compare with. And I'm, so I'm not sure uh, why this is. My guess is that it, the body is actually rather longer than a regular Les Paul and that they use the same body in their body size in their super suites. Basically the same guitar but with a longer fretboard. This is a 24 and 3 quarter uh, inch scale and the super suite has a 25 and a half like the Fender style scale length. I'm not sure about this. Please leave a comment and tell me the truth. Uh, is the body different? I don't know. Uh, 